Hey what's up everyone welcome to Effects Maniac this is Sayyid Mahmoud Amiri again and in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys how to create something like this using Typeflow and 3D Studio Max so we're going to be modeling the bag using Typeflow so it's a, it's a very neat way to create this effect uh, rather than having to go ahead and model it manually we're going to be using Typeflow cloth to do it and then of course we're going to be simulating the chips pieces and all that using Typeflow as well, right? So yeah, this is what we're going to be creating. And of course, if you want the project files, the textures and everything for this tutorial, you can always go to my Patreon page and join me there to support me as well. So you're more than welcome to join. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, make sure to click on subscribe and click on the notifications and set it to all so you get notified every time I upload a new video alright so I'm gonna go into 3d studio max and I'll go reset don't save yes so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go uh, for the bag I'm gonna create a box that is uh, thin like this much and then we're gonna give it some height so this is our box here. I'm going to right click on the X and Y axes to center them, uh, to center it on the scene and hit R and scale it down just like that. We want to make it even thinner so hit R and scale it down on the Y axis. And we want to give it uh, some good amount of polygons so I'm going to go with uh, 40, not 40 on the length. I'll hit Shift J to turn off the selection bracket. Uh, on the length I'm gonna set it to 3 on the width I'm gonna set it to 40 and height to 40 so this is going to be our bag of chips and we're gonna simulate that using tie flow so what I'm gonna do is create my tie flow so I'll create my tie flow right here and I'm gonna go to the editor and just uh, you know shrink it down a little bit I'm gonna go with birth objects pick this object and right click on the object and set to height selection and then it'll add a cloth bind and by the way if you're new to Typeflow and these things are new to you you can always go to my YouTube channel and I have a Typeflow basics tutorial so you can scroll down here there is the Typeflow for absolute beginners and then Typeflow cloth for beginners you can check them out as well if you're new to cloth so those are the things that you can you can check out and a lot of other type flow tutorials. Alright, so I'm gonna go back to 3D Studio Max. I'll go to my display and turn off mark particles with no geo. Turn it off. And then what I want to do is uh, sort of make the cloth uh, deactive on the top and the bottom of the bag because we don't want that to move. We only want the center to sort of like float. So what I'm gonna do is I'll go ahead create another box in the front view so we want it to encompass the top part of the bag and of course we want to decrease the segments so right click on them it'll turn them into the default value which is the minimum of one and I'll create one at the top and I'm gonna go hit shift and drag it down and I'll create one at the bottom all right, so I'll just move it right here. So these are going to be the objects that are going to be the parts of the object that are going to be disabled for the cloth. So what I'm going to do is select this, control select this, right click, object properties. I'm going to go to display as box. That's it. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my type flow and I'll add a surface test. And we want the we want to pick these boxes and we'll say volume inside meaning wherever the particles are inside these two volumes we want them to go to another event and that other event is going to be the particle switch and we want it to have we want to set it to deactivate bindings so here the bindings of the cloth will be deactivated uh, whichever particles are inside these two boxes so we have the cloth bind right and if I add like a noise sorry not noise a force operator to test it I'll set it to turbulence and set it the strength to one 
you will see that the particles are actually moving, but the the ones that are at the top and the bottom, they're not moving, so they're sort of trying to hold on to the cloth, but they can't because we don't have enough steps. So what I'm going to do is go to time step and set it to 1 by 4. And right now it's better, but still, you know, we're not having a lot of uh, steps. So we're going to increase that later. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'll delete this. And I'm going to go to the cloth and turn on CUDA Collision Solver and Self Collision because we want it to collide with itself as well. So right now we want to sort of inflate this uh, bag. So what I'm going to do is hit tab and type in uh, modify bindings. And I will go and put it down here. So I'll go to the first frame and I'll set the timing to continuous. And I'm going to go to the inflation and I'll set this to four. So right now, if I move forward, you can see that it inflates just like that. And you can see that the particles are sort of stretching in some weird ways. So what I'm going to do is go and increase the time step to one by eight. And it'll actually give it a lot more steps. So we don't really need like all the other frames. We just need the first initial frame. So this actually looks like a very good frame uh, or you know this one or this one we might even have to add a slow operator to sort of slow down the uh, I'll set it to like 16 it'll slow down the movement of the particles so that you'll have a nicer sort of smoother object so just like that if I set this to 3 it'll be a lot more and I can also go and even increase the time step to 112 so that we have less of an issue here. So just like that, I think this one looks better, the third frame, but then we can always sort of increase um, the detail here. So I'll go to my first box and I'll set this to like 10 so that we don't we don't see those weird uh, or even one so that we we don't get that yeah we're not getting that weird sort of result here so just like that we can we can we can go with this frame or we can go with this frame i might even want to set this to 2 because 1 is a little too low 2 is fine i think so i'll go with this frame right here and then we can scale it down later so uh, once you're okay with this, once you're happy with the result, you can just right click and convert it to edible poly and we'll just delete these two boxes. So yeah, I think it looks fine. Uh, we, we will fix those areas later. So I'm going to go to effect pivot only to hierarchy and then set it to center to object. Okay. And I'm just going to flatten it out a little bit because we don't want it to be that much, you know, inflated. And then to add some random detail, we can we can add a turbo smooth for some quality, and it'll fix those areas. And to add some random detail, I'm going to add a noise operator, and I'll set the scale to like 30, fractal probably like two, two and two. So it's giving it a bit of a, a sort of. Uh, random surface but then it's a little too small so I'm just gonna go ahead and increase the scale so you just want some subtle imperfections and then you can also add another turbo smooth on top so this is our bag right here so for the textures what I'm gonna do it's very simple I'm gonna do some lazy texturing so I'll go to my base editable poly level and I'm going to go to the top view and I will select half of this right so I'll select half of it and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to change my render setup to V-Ray so I'll go V-Ray 5 and then I'll hit M here with the polygon still selected I'm gonna go to V-Ray material diffuse and I'll just drag it here to add a bitmap and then we have this uh, front texture and then I'm just going to duplicate them both 
and I'll change this to the back texture. So for the front texture, I'm just going to uh, apply this to the front polys. And I'll hit Control i on the viewport to invert the selection. And then I'll add the back texture. And voila, we got our uh, bag of chips ready to be served. And just like that, we have our bag of chips. Just like that. And then for the materials, I'm also going to give like some reflection. But then we want to also uh, decrease the glossiness. Do the same for the other one. Decrease the glossiness and we got ourselves this material, right? So you can see it's reflecting also. And to create the chips pieces, uh, we will be using an object. So uh, you can normally use like a cylinder and delete like the top part but then it will it will actually give you like a small sort of uh, imperfection in the middle especially if you have a lot of detail in the surface so this will make a problem for us so instead of doing this what I'm gonna do is I'll create a box here sort of like a cube sorry so cube just like that and I'm going to flatten it out and I'll add a turbo smooth and increase the detail to like four and right now you can see that it's even and we don't have those sort of problems so it's an even sort of a disk object and now I'm gonna add a noise operator sorry noise and I'll set this to like 30 fractal 10 by 10 by 10 what is this so just like that I'll probably set the Z value to a lot more increase that so we have our simple piece here and then I can just scale it up just like that and I'll add another turbos mode to sort of remove the imperfections right just like that but we may not want to be like very much so we can we can just go ahead and turn this down and just like that all right so just these sort of pieces and we can scale it up and down based on our needs and I'm just gonna duplicate this and another copy and we can go into the noise and change the seed so chain that that's fine I think uh, not fine this is fine okay so once you create these objects uh, it's just a matter of like giving them a simple material and I have a texture for that as well that I got it off the internet and uh, you know it looks fine but you know just like you know like a chips texture and then you can go and add a UVW map modifier and they'll look good and we'll also add this to the bump map and change the color and stuff and do a simple physics simulation with Typeflow, uh, which I'm going to show you guys right now, which I did. So this is my scene. These look a little too big, but then we have these pieces. So my Typeflow setup is here. Uh, let's see. So it's pretty simple. Uh, you got rotation position icon which you can basically go right click preset flow and simple physics flow and that's basically it so you just add the shapes here and then add a physics collision and add the objects that you want to collide these particles with and I added some like basic lights and I have a seamless backdrop and that's basically the scene here and again if you want to grab this specific scene you can go to my Patreon page and it would mean a lot to me to join there as well. All right, so this was basically the today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you learned something from it and hope it gave you an idea of you know, like using Typeflow for things that seem pretty unusual. So this could have taken like 10, 15 minutes to model, but you know with Typeflow you can just create it uh, simply and fast. And that's that's basically the today's video. All right, so this was the today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you learned something from it. Until the next one, enjoy working.